All right, in this video, I'm going to briefly overview what you will find in the procedure sections of Lab 1, Week 1. This will be brief because embedded in these procedure sections are links to other videos, tutorial videos, where I show you how to do the tasks in much greater detail. So let's take a look. Lab 1, Week 1, here's the first procedure section. In this section, you learn how to observe with Skynet. There's a link here to the Skynet website. And there's another link to the first tutorial video, which I show you how to put an observation request into the system. Then after these tutorial videos in the lab, I like to review the highlights, the key points, how to set your various options, how to interpret the observability chart, that you should select all prompt telescopes available to you, not just at Saratololo, but at all observatories with prompt telescopes. Selecting your design telescope, putting in your exposure, and that's basically it. Again, the details are in the tutorial video. Next section, I discuss how to check your images. Once you put the observations into Skynet, you shouldn't just let them go and not look until next week's lab. Check back every day, take a look at your images, and if any of them are not good for any reason, then resubmit them. Again, there's a tutorial here on how to know if your image is good or not, and various examples are shown in the lab, but these are also discussed in that tutorial video. Then we're gonna start putting in our observations. In section three, we're going to observe planets. Venus through Neptune. Pluto is not a planet, it's a dwarf planet. We'll get to that a few tabs down. And Mercury is too close to the sun for Skynet to observe. So we won't observe that. But the table tells you what filter to use and what exposure duration. And I should say that if you're short on telescopes with U-band filters, you can always use the low through filter as a substitute. Next one, we're going to observe the moons around the four gas giants. There's some images showing you the moons, but then you get down to the table. You will just, again, point the telescope at these planets, but we're gonna use different filters that let more light through and exposure durations appropriate for those filters. Then you will observe dwarf planets. Here's your table with Ceres, Pluto, Haumea, and Makemake. Eris is not included. Eris is farther out, requires a longer exposure, harder to observe. So we'll leave that one out. But you can see the filters for these and the durations. Pluto, Haumea, Makemake, they're out beyond Neptune. They're kind of faint, so we'll be using the high through filter and 80 second exposures just to see them. Then you're going to observe deep sky objects, and you will not observe all of these, but select one from this list. These are nebulae, both star forming regions and star death regions, supernova remnants. Pick one of these. Pick one from this list. These are globular clusters. There are many other globular clusters you can observe as well. These are just two of the best ones. And then one from this list. And these, are, these are galaxies. And if you want, you do have some extra time. You can shoot multiple objects if you want, but you'll only submit one from each list into the WebAssign lab. Next procedure, you're going to shoot an image of Earth's moon. It's a little tricky because you're going to have to place the field of view of a selected telescope near the terminator on the moon. And so there's a tutorial video for how to do that. And here is the filter and exposure duration for that. And lastly, there's some information if you just want to play. I describe the different filter sets. So you can pick other objects, and this will help you figure out which filters to use. And I talk a little bit about setting the exposure time. If you set it too long, you'll saturate. It'll look something like this, in which case you want to scale back and observe with the shorter exposure time.
Okay, that's it for the procedure for lab one, week one. Oh, one more thing. Put your observations in right away. Sometimes it takes a couple days for the observations to get back to you, depending upon weather and telescope availability. And even then, once they come back to you, there might be something wrong with some of them and you may need to resubmit, which could take a few more days. You're going to want to have as many observations back as possible before you begin the second week of lab one. So definitely put your observations in right now during the first week of lab one, right after you met, and you should have almost everything you need back before you meet for week two, and then you have some time before the lab is due to collect those final observations. Okay, that's it.